Only a skillful fisherman will fool a trout into believing his fly is as good as the real thing. In summer, British rivers buzz with an amazing variety of insects. One of the most beautiful and intriguing is the damselfly. On just about every piece of fresh water in summer, there are damselflies hovering above the surface of the water, trying to find mates or places to lay their eggs. One of the most incredible facts about these bright little insects is that they were flitting over pools when dinosaurs were around. Insects looking just like this one, perched on the plants which were to form the coal seams. Now, 200 million years later, they're still with us. Look at this modern insect and compare it with another 200 million years old. No wonder people call them flying fossils. Damselflies are species of small dragonflies. The only obvious difference between the two is that damselflies fold their wings back over their bodies when they perch, whereas a dragonfly holds them straight out to the side. The dark waters contrast with the colour and delicacy of these jewel-like insects. But there's another contrast beneath the surface. In its early life underwater, a damselfly larva can appear as ancient and savage as the distant period when it first evolved as a ruthless underwater hunter. The key to the success of all the dragonflies is their flying skills. They can hover and change position instantly. They can fly backwards, something few other insects can do and in forward flight, the largest of them can cruise at 50 kilometers an hour. A damselfly's wings are an amazing piece of evolutionary design. Although they're very light, they're also extremely strong due to a system of tubular spars with cross braces along their length. As a damselfly lives by catching insects in flight, it needs accurate eyesight to match its flying ability. The joint between the wings and the body is structured so that it can rotate to almost any angle. This design has been imitated by engineers. The South West African slang word for a helicopter, Naldekerke, means dragonfly. It's easy to see why. How a damselfly controls its aerobatics is visible only in slow motion. There are two pairs of wings working alternately to produce a continuous smooth source of power. 
The downstroke gives the lift to keep the insect airborne and the up and back strokes drives it forward through the air. The wing rotates on the upstroke. Orsman call this feathering. It reduces drag so that the upstroke doesn't counteract the effect of the downstroke. In midsummer, most of the damselflies darting up and down the river are searching for mates. The male seizes the duller coloured female and flies off with her to a suitable perch for mating. He grips her behind the head with claspers located at the end of his abdomen. These have evolved so that they will only fit his species. There are 20 species of damselfly in Britain, many of which appear similar. The insect specific mating adaptations are one way of identifying them. More importantly, they also prevent interbreeding between different species. If the female is unwilling, the male will not be able to fertilize her. Mating requires close cooperation between the sexes. Before mating, the male must transfer some sperm from an opening at the end of his abdomen to a spot just behind his thorax. Only when it's in this position can the female reach it with her genital aperture, a contortion which she performs voluntarily, providing the male's behaviour has been exactly right for her species. Even after mating successfully, the male won't let go. There's another important piece of teamwork needed before the female can lay her eggs. On a stem nearby, a pair of dragonflies are mating in much the same way. Another reason for their contorted position is that like this, there's the least chance of the partners killing each other. All dragonflies, damselflies included, are voracious hunters and sometimes eat their own kind. The dragonflies take off when their mating is complete and a strange manoeuvre takes place. The male lowers the female rapidly to the water where, with a quick dip of her abdomen, she lays an egg under the surface. Egg laying is more complicated for damselflies. Females have to lay their eggs inside the stems of water plants. They choose areas where the pondweed comes close to the surface, but they aren't the only ones hovering with intent. Unpaired males wait for courting couples. In order to lay eggs, the female has to go under water, and when she does, her mate will have to let go of her. The solo males wait for the female to re-emerge and then try to grab her before her original partner. The competition can cause fights among males, but the friction can have an advantage for the females. After immersion in water, the female is unable to fly until she can dry her wings. The males hovering out of reach are safe, but a flightless female is easy prey for a passing trout but her suitors can sometimes come to the rescue. As a female goes underwater to lay eggs, an attendant group of males, including her mate, wait for her to reappear. But before any of them will have a chance of grabbing her, she must first lay a batch of eggs. When she finds a suitable stem, she cuts into it with a sharp blade at the tip of her abdomen, making a groove to hold an egg. 
Then she lays one egg into the groove and crawls methodically on to lay another nearby. The female stays underwater for up to 20 minutes, laying as many eggs as she can before lack of oxygen forces her to the surface. Females are most vulnerable to attack by trout as they float up to the surface and until their wings are dry. It's then that they need a male to rescue them. One of the hovering males should have snatched this female up by now. Instead, a wagtail takes advantage of her plight. The main function of the males hovering over the pondweed is to ensure that each female is mated again as soon as she has laid her eggs. They function also as a rescue service saving damsels in distress. The females have a hard life. No sooner have they dried out than they're mated and they then find themselves being pushed under the water again. Although this strange system of mating is usually very successful, it can sometimes go wrong. Occasionally, a male seizes a female of the wrong species by mistake. Although he's able to hang on to her, the female refuses to complete the mating process. The grip on her neck may be wrong, or the shape of his abdomen may not feel right. Whatever the reason, the attempt will fail. By her refusal to comply, the female ensures that hybridization doesn't take place. After several unsuccessful efforts, she finally gets rid of her unwanted suitor. Winter is the turning point of the damselfly's year. All last summer's adults are dead, but the species lives on in the larvae, hatched from the eggs embedded in the stems of water plants. The egg takes only two weeks to hatch in the late summer and what emerges is a maggot-like creature called a prolarva. When it hatches, the prolarva burrows out of the stem into the water. It molts immediately after it emerges to produce the first proper larval stage, complete with legs and three tail-like gills for breathing. The prolarva is a fleeting transition between the egg and the underwater nymph, which is the damselfly's shape for most of its life. The nymph is a ferocious predator right from the start. Despite its fragile appearance at first, it's a beautifully designed and equipped hunting animal. Later, when its skin has hardened, it will spend its time catching and eating its neighbours in the pool. The gills at its tail end are its main but not only means of breathing. 
it has breathing holes or spiracles along the length of its body. Most dragonfly nymphs lurk in ambush for their prey rather than hunting actively for food. The damselfly nymph gropes among the waterweed and across the pond bottom for likely meals, which can take many different forms. A midge larva, for instance. The nymph responds to the midge larva's wriggling. Its eyesight is poor, but it's very sensitive to movements in the water. Midge larvae are part of the diet of practically every freshwater animal. In slow motion, the damselfly nymph's jaws unfold towards the prey. Then, sharp pincers at the ends grab their victim and drag it back to the nymph's mouth. If there are plenty of water fleas around, the nymph just sits and picks its meals out of the water. Cannibalism can be a problem for immature damselflies. To a large nymph, a smaller one is just another meal. It's an efficient way of ensuring that even if prey is short, at least some nymphs grow up with an adequate food supply. Even a full-grown damselfly nymph has a dangerous enemy in the shape of the nymphs of the larger dragonflies. They are swifter swimmers with enormous appetites. Their thicker bodies have a pumping mechanism which enables them to swim by jet propulsion. As the days lengthen into spring, the water warms up and the damselfly nymphs grow fast. Eventually, the time comes for them to change into their adult phase. After a rest near the surface, the nymph crawls into the air for the first time. When it nears the top of the reed, it prepares to be transformed. A transformation which has occurred every summer for hundreds of millions of years.
submerged damselfly pumps fluid into the veins of its wing buds to expand them. Then the damselfly pauses to let its wings dry and harden, especially the joints at the base, which, together with its now much improved eyesight, will make it a formidable hunter. Soon, it's ready to take flight. Its life as an underwater predator is now a thing of the past. The empty nymph skin is all that's left. For some damselflies, life on the wing is soon ended. They have enemies above the water just as deadly as those below. The young adult's first encounter with the spider's web is often its last. They learn to avoid them if they can see them first. This one has had a narrow escape. It's cleaning scraps of spider's web off its eyes. All dragonflies can look ahead with both eyes. They have binocular vision. They spend a lot of time keeping their eyes clean. They have all-round vision too, which permits them to fly among reeds without crashing into them. But it's their binocular vision which gives them the ability to chase prey. This one is hunting a caddis fly close to the water. Having caught its prey, it takes it to a perch to eat it. Fossilised animals are usually nature's failures, creatures like the dinosaurs which died out because they couldn't keep abreast of a changing world. The damselflies were here before the dinosaurs. They saw them come and go, and they're still with us. There were other flying insects in those distant days, but very few of them are still on the wing like the damselflies, one of nature's triumphant successes. Last night we met the honeybee and another useful character is profiled tomorrow when the silk moth is our small miracle. <laughs>